I'm going to show you how to use macros. And a macro is basically a special knob that allows you to control more than one parameter at the same time with the twist of one knob. So let me show you a couple that I've just made myself and then I'll show you how I made them. That way it'll, it'll give you a point of reference of how you might use these. Of course you could explore any number of ways of using it. So I've got some Rex file loops that I've got from BT's breaks sample CD. I'll go ahead and play that and what you'll notice here as I move this macro you'll notice a lot of different parameters moving at the same time. I'm controlling the gain here and you'll see this a lot of movement here. I'm controlling the feedback, the wet dry, and then all the way over here I'm controlling the wet and dry on the saturator to dirty up the sound. And I've already assigned this macro to a knob on my keyboard as you can see. So let me go ahead and play the loop and just show you how I'm using it to affect this. Okay, and all that was done with just a twist of one knob. And now, as far as using an instrument, you might want to control more than one parameter on a synth. With this macro that I made here for this instrument, I'm controlling the resonance, the cutoff frequency, and the LFO all at the same time. So if I play this, you'll be able to hear the changes that the movement of one knob will do with a macro. Just like so. so. So that's why you would want to use a macro. Now let me show you how I approached making this. In order to use this, you need to drag in either an instrument rack or an audio rack into uh, your track. And you can find those here in your audio effects. It's the very first parameter you'll see is audio effect rack. And in your instruments, you'll see it right underneath the drum racks. Now, in order to assign different parameters to your macro, it's really easy. With this synth, I've basically dragged in a CM101, which is a computer music free synth, which is pretty cool. And you hit this little triangle here to open up all the parameters. Then you're going to click your MIDI map, or map mode, rather. Map mode. And it shows that these are already assigned, but the way I assigned them, let me just go ahead and click on this so that you see. I would just click on this parameter. Then I would come over here to map, and then you'll see that that shows up here at the top as a new parameter that I'm controlling. Now if I no longer want to control that parameter, I can just uh, come back over, click on this, and hit unmap, and it'll take it out. So I'm controlling the cutoff frequency, the resonance, and the LFO over here. So I've clicked on each one of those and clicked on map you got to do them one at a time. And then up here you can actually control the parameters. So the cutoff frequency I start it when the macro is at zero the cutoff frequency starts at 0.58 and then when the macro is maxed out at 127 that maxes our cutoff frequency to 100 percent. And with the resonance I go from a high resonance of 74 percent down to 21 percent when I hit the highest. And then here the LFO I go from 0 to 85. So you'll notice that you have complete control over each of the parameters and a lot of the details of how that's going to move in much more of a way than just controlling a, a one regular knob from your 
MIDI controller. Now, once you have that set up there, you're going to turn off your map mode and you're going to assign this macro to a MIDI knob on your on your controller. And you're simply going to do that. I've shown you this in another tutorial, but uh, just so you can keep with me. You're going to hit MIDI here. Then you're going to click on the macro you want to control. Twist the knob, which I've already done. And then come back up here to the MIDI button. Click it off. And now when you twist that knob, you're going to be able to control it. And I've done the same thing over here with my audio effect. I created an audio effect rack by dragging in the effects, creating a chain. And then I just the same, go to my MIDI map and click on the parameters I want to control and then I can control the percentages and everything. And when I move this, let me turn this off the MIDI map, map mode rather. When I twist my knob, as you can see, it controls all the parameters. Pretty cool. Now, here's a couple things that I, I don't want you to get too confused here. So I'm going to actually make an effect rack from scratch because if you do it in an incorrect way, you might get different results. So these effects racks are actually very cool and what they can allow you to do is uh, create multiple chains within one rack of effects. So imagine having your guitar with your guitar effects, but imagine being able to assign different chains of effects through the same guitar. That's essentially what you can do here. Or let's say you want to run your low frequencies through this chain of effects and your middle frequencies through another chain of effects. You can do that and I'll explain that in another tutorial. But you don't want to create those multiple chains for what we're doing here. So here's how you're going to do it correctly. So get your audio track and then we would drag in your audio effect rack. And this is the same with an instrument rack. I'm going to go ahead here and open these up just by clicking and highlighting these. And then I'm going to drop the first effect into this window. So let's, doesn't really matter what we drag in. Let's just say we want a chorus, so I would drag a chorus in. Now the thing you don't want to do is grab your next effect and drag it into here. Because that's going to create a new chain. So now you've got two different chains. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete and delete that. Instead, once you've created your first chain, you're going to want to drag your next effect all the way out and put it next to this. Not on the outside. Over here, if, if you're over here on the outside, let me drop that there. If you see a separation there, that means that th it's not part of the chain. And it also means that it won't be able to be controlled by a macro. So make sure that you drag that in. And you can notice that you're doing it right because this little line right here will darken. So just drag it in like so. And drag it next. And so forth. So that's how you create a chain in your effect rack or your instrument rack. It's the same thing. And then from there, you would go to your map mode and decide what you what parameters you want to do. I just didn't want you to get confused by making a bunch of different chains and understanding why they weren't working the way you expected them to. So go ahead and play with that. I'm sure you'll be able to be even more creative than I've been on this tutorial here and I hope you have fun with it. <laughs>